Hello, my name is Jason Caldwell. I am the growth engineering lead at Automatic. We're the parent company of WordPress.com. WordPress.com is a hosted version of the WordPress open source software, and it's really the very best way to experience WordPress. Launched in 2005, WordPress.com gave internet denizens with little to no technical background the ability to create blogs and websites for free. WordPress has since exploded into a global open source content management system with thousands of plugins and themes that empower users. From businesses and nonprofits to hobbyists, enthusiasts, and influencers of every stripe, with the ability to create all kinds of websites. As of today, 38% of the web is built on WordPress. At Automatic, the WordPress.com marketing division began experimenting with AMP in 2018. AMP definitely piqued our interest because the speed of WordPress.com affects every metric we care about. Things like time to first byte, bounce rate, SEO, reader satisfaction, average session duration, cost efficiency, and conversion rate. This is particularly true for paid search ads that we run because we have marketing landing pages that target high value keywords, such as create a site and build a website. By converting landing pages to AMP, we hoped to improve WordPress.com's click-through and sign-up conversion rates. By converting landing pages to AMP, we hoped to improve WordPress.com's click-through and sign-up conversion rates. The first thing we tackled was CSS. We had to strip away all unused CSS to get under the 75 kilobyte limit. This took a bit of work and it taught us a lot. For example, our pages were previously loading a lot of heavy CSS as part of a design framework. By only loading the CSS we really needed on any given page, we were able to reduce overhead substantially. Ultimately, all of our CSS had to be highly optimized and inlined because in order to pass AMP validation, we needed to eliminate all external style sheets and stay within the 75 kilobyte limit for best performance. Another challenge was figuring out how to handle Google Ads and other trackers, including Google Analytics and our own internal data platform. Given the large number of analytics partners that we work with and the fact that Google's AMP cache loads our landing pages from a different domain via the AMP content delivery network, we initially faced several cross-domain cookie and client ID tracking challenges. To get AMP landing pages to work with our internal data platform, we were able to set up linkers using the AMP analytics component. Linkers pass important tracking IDs from AMP landing pages out through the query string attached to each link that a user clicks on. So by linking these tracking IDs, we pass them from the AMP landing pages back to application pages on our domain. We were then able to receive the tracking IDs in the query string of incoming clicks and map those IDs to our own internal data platform. Google Ads and Google Analytics both take a similar approach. We made a few minor adjustments to our Google Analytics configuration. The required changes were all well documented by the Google Analytics platform, and they were not too much trouble. We also learned how to use several AMP components more extensively in an effort to reach parity with things like navigation menus, page layouts, and embedded media from the original designs that we were working with. For example, we tracked navigation menu state using the AMP bind and AMP state components. And of course, we use many instances of things like the AMP image component with various configurations. I do remember that it was quite frustrating back in 2018 when we couldn't use any custom JavaScript in AMP pages. This has since been resolved with the introduction of the AMP script component, so we haven't had this trouble since. Fast forward a few weeks from when we first started, and we had our first few AMP landing pages completed. Next, we used cookie-based splits to A-B test the AMP pages against the original regular HTML landing pages. We used paid search ads to run these A-B split tests. Our marketing division relies in part on paid traffic, so we really wanted to test the user experience for that group of people. 
and based on test results, then make a decision about whether to continue with AMP as a tool for more effective marketing. It is worth mentioning that we ran this paid search test by setting up two visually identical landing pages at two slightly different URLs. One page was built using regular HTML. The other was built using AMP. The Google Ads campaign that we ran distributed traffic to each of these pages equally. The results were better than we expected. In terms of speed, we definitely saw a boost in performance with the AMP version of our pages. But we also saw huge cost savings, primarily with mobile paid search ads, which we did not quite expect. It was a pleasant surprise. We saw a 6% lift in conversions, a 35% lower CPC in page search, and an 80% increase in page speed. It was really nice to be able to put those numbers down and say, hey, look, here are the benefits that we're seeing from this work. Since then, we've converted many of our existing landing pages to AMP, and we're building new landing pages with an AMP-first approach. This makes us more efficient. Instead of building pages in multiple formats, we're now trying to build only with AMP, and we're doing our best to adhere to community guidelines and best practices for performance from start to finish. As of today, each month, we're serving hundreds of thousands of WordPress.com page views in the AMP format. Quite simply, AMP makes us happy. Engineers are happy, and our marketing and finance teams are happy. These are the folks who keep an eye on our bottom line. The turning point for agreeing to go AMP first with landing pages was really the lightning fast delivery of these pages through Google Search. On mobile devices, Google preloads AMP landing pages that appear in search results. Our AMP landing pages then load much, much faster, of course, and they perform better, which leads to a huge cost savings for us in Google Ads. We really did learn a lot along the way. Going AMP first opened our eyes to a whole world of possibilities with AMP. We have since improved support for AMP at WordPress.com. If your goal is to create high performing web pages, AMP provides a fantastic framework that will get you there. And we're now passing all that we've learned onto our customers. At WordPress.com, we've worked hard to improve our AMP ready themes and plugins. And the AMP plugin for WordPress is now available for all of the WordPress websites that we host. And every post that you publish at WordPress.com supports the AMP format automatically. So I'd like to invite you all to sign up for free and try it out for yourselves. Go to WordPress.com, create your first site, and publish your first post using our all-new block editor. On mobile devices, Google will deliver the AMP version of all posts that you publish at WordPress.com automatically. For all WordPress.com sites, AMP is enabled by default. Customers on our business plan or higher can install custom plugins and themes, including the official AMP for WordPress plugin, which provides additional features and functionality. So thanks for allowing me to share our AMP success story with you today. We're really looking forward to all that we can do with AMP at WordPress.com.